Starting now, you can get a transcript of each week's Rich Dad radio show. Just visit www.richdad.com radio and download a copy today. This is the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. It's Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. So we have a very, very interesting show for you, especially if you're wondering about, and we're always talking about the future here, but more importantly, your money and where, where you're going to put it. You can put it in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Zipcoin. You can put it in stocks, your 401k, or real estate. So that's who we're going to be talking about today. What do you do with your money? And one of the reasons it's an important show is simply because it's 2018. Stock market went past 26,000, the Dow. And they say it never went so fast. And everybody's getting excited. So I was watching uh, Bubble Vision, you know, the Financial News Network. So they have this ETF guy. He is the head of the ETF Association of the World or something. He says, keep going. You know, it's going to keep going. Buy some more. You know, jump into emerging markets. Jump into this. Jump into that. Don't worry. It'll, it'll work. And then on another station, same kind of bubble vision, Sam Zell comes in. And Sam <laughs> Zell is an old timer like me. And Sam Zell sits there and he goes, he says, what does this remind you of? He says, this reminds me of 1999. And he goes, why does it remind you of that? Remember there was a company called Cisco? Everybody was in Cisco, and the guy says, what does that mean to you? Everybody's in Amazon today. And Amazon's this machine that's gobbling up everything. So basically, Sam Zell was saying what uh, we've always said at Rich Dad Radio and all this, is that every boom has a bust, and every bust goes to a boom. And it's the, the problem is, at the top of a market, people jump in. The amateurs come sucked in at the top. When, for those who have listened to us in the meantime, is that I like the bottom. You know, I like it when it crashes because it's more exciting down there. And the best, inv and best investments are dirt cheap. But we're going to be talking today the difference between stocks and real estate. Because a lot of people say, well, I'm just going to jump into real estate. Well, it's okay to jump into stocks, and we'll tell you why. But it's really stupid, 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 stupid to jump into real estate. Any comments, Kim? Well, I this is one of our favorite subjects is real estate, and we've got two experts here in the in the studio with us today, and we're going to actually be talking about you know we've got 2018, what's unfolding, what are we looking at? We've got all these new tax bills that have come out, and where's the market going? And as you said, you know, as soon as the market starts taking off and going higher and higher and higher, everybody jumps in, which is exactly. <laughs> Not the thing to do. So we're going to give some uh, reality on what really is going on out there today. So our guest today, our longtime Rich Dad advisor and dear friend and partner in many, many, many deals is Ken McElroy. And the person that runs runs Kenny in his life <laughs> is, is, is Leslie. And she is the best because this is the point. We have Kenny and Leslie. Kenny, what would happen if you invested in a property without Leslie? And let me just explain. Uh, Ken McElroy, he's our rich oh. dad advisor on real estate, founder of MC Companies. He's the author of the ABCs of Real Estate Investing, the ABCs of Property Management, and the Advanced Guide to Real Estate Investing. And Leslie Bryce is partner and president of MC Residential Communities, and she is a talk about the expert in hands-on property management and all, all realms of real estate. So we got the two experts here. We're excited. <laughs> Right. So the thing is, Kenny, can somebody just buy real estate without property management? No, people do that all the time. And, you, you, you know, and that's actually typically how they lose their money. Yeah. They, the buying of the property is actually the easy part. It's the property management where the money is either made or lost, right? It's always, yeah. You know, before we buy anything, as you know, we already know, well, we're projecting out two, three years on what the return is. And the only way a business is a, you know, investing is a team sport. You know, that's why Leslie's here. That's why she's a partner and president of our she's company. She's the brains too. She is. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, so we get everyone together before we make a purchase. Everyone. Well, I think what a lot of people don't understand is every single piece of property is a business in itself. It is. We, we looked at 600 deals last year and made offers on 60. 
And uh, on all 60 deals, we had a number of people weigh in on those offers, on the how we underwrote them, uh, you know, how they're going to operate. Because before we go raise money, which is the next thing that we do, we want to make sure that all the numbers are correct and the market's correct and, you know, all the everything that all our assumptions are correct. So let me, let me get, before I bring Leslie on, the reason this is so important is because Kenny and I have done talks all over the world with some good times and some bad times out there and some funny things, but um, we've had people come up and say, oh, when the stock market was down, this, oh, it's just jump into real estate. The point here, there's a very large difference between real estate and stocks. If you're in, this is the big difference. It's called liquidity. If you jump into, let's say I buy Amazon and it's a mistake, I can buy in the morning and sell 10 minutes later, I'm out. But the moment you buy a piece of property, you almost can't get out, especially if it starts going down. And so the whole point of this, when somebody tells you to always jump in and buy real estate, they're nuts, don't listen to them. With that said, the key here is whether the profit is made or lost is in property management. And Kim and I have known Leslie for years, which tremendous respect for her. We've traveled to China together and all this, and it's always been a blast and fun. But most important, the happiest days of our lives is when, when the check comes Leslie in. Leslie hands the check. <laughs> 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 and they're getting bigger and bigger every year. Those so are with my that favorite said, times, too. <laughs> <laughs> so with that said, Leslie, uh, welcome to the show. And could, you, could you give people a little bit of your background on how did you become a property manager, which then leads to becoming president? Because... Real estate is about management. Well, sh sure. Uh, thanks for having me and and having Ken. Um, we we uh, really enjoy being involved with you guys. Um, property management. I, it wasn't something I set out to do. Uh, it was really interesting. As I was uh, getting out of high school, I wanted to get a job for the summer and uh, started working at an apartment property. And I, I you know in between that time and going to college, I decided that that was the right place for me to wow. go. Same as you, Kenny, right? Right out of yeah, high school. very similar. Ken, Ken, Ken went to college and, and was able to work through through that through college, but for me, it was just right out of high school. It worked great because I, I had a young family and uh, we were very, very young, not, not married, but I was starting a family okay. just out of high school. So we decided that that was a, a great path. I ended up loving what I was doing and, and years later, because I've been doing this for 30 years, years later I look back and I, I, I just, uh, there's no two days the same. So I enjoy it so much that I don't miss that formal education. For me, my education was, was on the job. Correct. Mm -hmm. So where was this property? The property that I started on? Is yeah. that, uh, so uh, Phoenix, actually. Oh, it was really? a 1,200 unit property in oh, Phoenix. 1,200? 1,222 wow. units. And what was your position? Paradise then? Lakes. I They wouldn't let me lease. They let they allowed me to collect rent from folks right. and write work orders. <laughs> <laughs> so I was relegated to giving service to the current residents that were at the, at the property and was able to move up and around into the different departments there. It was great because I, I got to, to feel uh, what each of the departments departments were and and to understand a little bit more but could you, uh, could you give us an idea of some of the different departments because you know even Trump talks about it some of the best experience he had or education was collecting rent well it's it's such a good question because there it, it it appears like it's a really easy job to do but there are so many different aspects on a 1200 unit property we had to have a department for rent collection for maintenance for leasing apartments for tending to the current residents and and just renewing How leases about evictions? evictions for sure that was a, a a major part of what we did is collecting rent and and holding folks accountable for paying rent on time uh, which led to more um, sales and leasing, and and around and round and round we went. You know, I remember going to um, was it in, was it in Texas the property that uh, we went to, and you had this great idea on people that were paying rent late, and you don't you're, you're not going to learn this in school, but they they were paying rent rent they were paying rent late, and you wanted them to pay on time. So you organized that on the day rent was due, you'd have a little breakfast for everybody. And they would come and they would come to the <laughs> office and they would get their coffee and juice and their muffin and their croissants and they would pay the rent. And they couldn't get breakfast unless they gave you a check. That's right. I mean, that's like simple, Path simple of, strategies. Yeah. You did know, did to, that work? To, I thought it was great. For sure. Well, and we did lease renewals in the same way because right. you want to continue their residency. One of the best ways to be profitable is to renew your current renter's lease. 
right. so that you don't have turnover. You end up spending so much less on on advertising and turning the apartment. Repair, repairs. Fixing up. You bet. Yep. So having the same kind of social interaction and and social interaction is one of the best things about property management, multifamily property management, and the fact that we get folks together, people are, are now, they're renting by choice more than they used to because they what love- mean, renting by choice? Renting by choice rather than buying a home. Oh, okay. Home oh, ownership okay. rates have, have changed over the years. A, a lot of, you know, you look at the type of renters that we have, the millennials in particular, uh, they, they don't want to be saddled with a, a mortgage and they don't want to have to mow lawn. Uh, and, and so they like to cohabitate with folks that they can be social with. And so these apartment properties, it, we focus a lot on service to the customer in that way. Remember that? There was this one guy, Mr. Real Estate or something. His thing was, if you renewed the first year, you got, let's say, a toaster. Oh, and you right. Re- re- renewed the second year, you got this. But the third year, you got a TV. <laughs> and he says people would stay for three years to get that TV that cost them 195 bucks. And he says, I mean, Kenny, 195 bucks for no turnover for three years. What's that worth to It's you? incredible. I mean, I mean, when somebody moves out, you have to clean it, you have a lot of maintenance, you have to usually paint it, and then you have to advertise it, and then you have to pay somebody to lease it. So the costs are in right? the thousands. And we, we actually implemented that on one of our properties, and what we decided is what can we give them that we need in the apartment anyway? So if they renewed the first year, they got a ceiling fan because yeah. we wanted to put ceiling fans yeah. in. So it was an incentive for them yep. to stay, and it helped us because we had to do it anyway. Excellent. Yeah, yeah it's, be- it's better to spend money on the apartment yes. and give them something. Yeah. yeah so we do that but it, too. But it's really interesting. It doesn't take much brain power to think about it. Okay, a TV set after three years, they, they, they kind of grow into the apartment by then. So anyway, we're talking to Ken McElroy and Leslie Bryce. We're talking about the difference between real estate and stocks, and the, the, the markets are really high right now. And just to be realistic, okay, all markets go up and all markets come down. And so personally, you know, people are talking about let's jump into stocks because the Dow went over 26,000 and real estate's hot and everywhere around where we're broadcasting from today in Old Town Scottsdale with all these apartment houses, but when Kim and I met Kenny and Leslie years ago. Nobody was in apartment houses. The apartment houses were the dogs of real estate, right, Kim? Oh yeah, there was nobody in the in that market, and we that was that was fun because we had a lot to choose from at that point. But right. now everybody's in multifamily. So we come back. We'll be talking to, more to uh, Ken and Leslie and Kim. We're talking about for those of you who are really serious, thinking about whether you should go into your four hundred one k and stocks. Or should you go into real estate? You know, right now it's a good time to listen because real estate has some of the highest advantages in ROI, return on investment, but also the biggest problems. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Rich Dad Radio Show with Robert Kiyosaki. Don't be like Charlie. Charlie is that do-it-yourselfer who does himself in. Do-it-yourself is good for tile and grout, It is not good for asset protection. Charlie thought he'd save a few dollars forming his LLC online. With no guidance, he did it wrong. When he sold the property, he lost thousands and thousands of dollars. He did himself in by trying to do it himself. Don't burn yourself. Use Corporate Direct to set up and maintain your LLCs and corporations. Corporate Direct is owned and operated by attorney and rich dad advisor, Garrett Sutton. Garrett wrote the bestsellers, Loopholes of Real Estate, and Start Your Own Corporation. He is Robert Kiyosaki's attorney for asset protection. He and his team will do it right. Visit them at CorporateDirect.com or call 800-600-1760. Mention Rich Dad and receive $100 off your formation fee. That's CorporateDirect.com. CorporateDirect.com. Log on to RichDadRadio.com while you listen. Now back to Robert Kiyosaki. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. You can listen to the Rich Dad Radio Show anytime, anywhere, and you're on in Android or uh, iTunes. And all of our, our our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. And if you listen to this again, if you have friends, family, or business associates, especially or somebody who thinks they're going to be a real estate investor, especially a flipper. I mean, you should, you should listen to this program because real estate is a different magilla. It's a different animal. 
And the reason I asked Ken, and Ken McElroy is author of ABCs of Real Estate Investing, ABCs of Property Management, and the Advanced Guide to Real Estate Investment, and Leslie Bryce is partner and president of MC Residential Companies, which is Kenny's companies, is that real estate is a different animal. It's not like the stock market. And the biggest, there's one big word that is the difference, it's called liquidity. Again, I'll say it again. If you buy Amazon this morning, you can be out in 10 minutes. The moment you buy that piece of property, you have a albatross around your neck. And the key to real estate investing is property management. And both Kenny and Leslie got their start in property management, which is why they're so successful. And that's why Kim and I make the big bucks investing with them because it's property management. You know, you can buy a great property and lose everything. I've seen guys do that. But a great, a bad property can turn into a great property due to a property management. Yeah, so Leslie, let me ask you this, because I heard this the other day. Some some guy was pitching how anybody can get into investment real estate. And he, his comment was, hey, if you have bought a house in your lifetime, if you've bought a personal residence, then you know enough about real estate that you can become a real estate investor. What would you say to that? Well, I would say right now it makes no sense at the top of the market to be buying, first of all. But secondly, to think that you can flip uh, a, a multifamily property or any property for that matter um, is is not true. But so is, if somebody but isn't an investment property very different from a residential, yeah, a I'm... personal residence? Absolutely, absolutely. Per, so if, if I'm a homeowner, makes no sense. If I'm a homeowner, do I know anything about investment real estate? You you don't. Um, you, you you don't have to deal with tenants in your own home. And the fact is, if you buy an investment property, you've got to be prepared for the maintenance that comes with it, the the financial responsibility that comes with managing a, How about evictions a home evictions. And people not paying you and the law. You bet. And There's taxes. so many ways to discriminate against someone. Uh, you have to know how to lease to someone and how to avoid um, you know, getting into legal hot water uh, where that's concerned. So um, let me just say this, okay? I, it's, I'm gonna get into this. Rich Dad is an, is an educational company. We don't sell real estate or stocks or mutual funds or Bitcoins. But Kenny is the author of the ABCs of Real Estate Investing. If you're really thinking about investing in real estate, buy that book. Start with that book. The second book is the ABCs of Property Management. Probably the most important of the two books, but you have to have the first before the second. And his third book is the Advanced Guide to Real Estate Investing. The Advanced Guide is how Kenny, with the with the associate of his whole team, is able to return infinite returns. I mean, Kim and I make millions and millions of dollars with Kenny and Leslie and pay very little in taxes. But you don't just get to do that because you bought a house. Do you know what I mean? There is there is a process. So if my whole message in this program today is that if you are going, if you do not want to buy these three books, don't invest in real estate. Or if you're not willing to take a real estate class, don't invest in real estate. I'll say it again, the key word is liquidity. The moment you buy a stock, you can get out the split second. Real estate, you can't do that. If it starts to go down, it gets worse. Right, Leslie? I agree. We've, we've Some of the best properties we bought when somebody mismanaged a property like San Antonio, right? Yeah, well, we, we look for broken properties. We look for properties that are mismanaged. That's actually our target. We wanna find things that we can fix. Where people like me ran it before you. <laughs> yeah, that's And right. I just want to say, you know, once you've read the books, once you've taken a course and you are ready to courses. get courses and you are ready to invest, start small. I think the biggest issue between a stock and real estate is the difference between an individual and a team. And I, I think it doesn't take, it takes only one person, an individual to buy a stock. But to buy real estate, it takes a, a team. Right. What are some of the, let me ask Kenny, what are some of the things the average startup doesn't even think about? Basically everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, it, it, there's, it's so complex. There, there, there's leases, there's, there's a bunch of legal issues, there's uh, the tenants themselves, there's you, you know, how you evaluate them, there's how you manage them, there's how you manage the maintenance part of it, there's how you handle the banks and the insurance and the, the reserves, and it, it, there's just so many things in the financial statements and, you know, to, to see whether it's cash flowing or not. And, and, and it, the last thing you look at is, is it going up? The last thing you look the at, last not thing. the first oh, thing. Oh, the price yeah. of the and that's what everybody, that's what everybody looks on. at first. Right. 
they say, okay, I, I can buy this house for 200000 and I can sell it for 250000 That's the last thing we look at. You know, we, of course, look at that because it's important. We want to we wanna buy in a market that's trending up. But the truth is, there's so it's it's a it's a business. There's somebody moving into uh, an asset that you own, and you owe them a lot of respect and 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 management of you know their environment. They're paying you for that. So these are you know people don't think of this, but every single you know if, if you're renting for a thousand dollars and you have a year lease, that's a twelve thousand dollar contract right. with with somebody. Right. That's significant. Yeah, Somebody's- that's why we say, and that's why we say start small because you can read about it and you get an understanding of it, but until your feet hit the ground and you're facing the fire, so we say start small because that's where you're going to learn about how to deal with tenants and how to deal with maintenance and how to deal with the legal and the evictions and all that. And even then, you're going to still learn. You're going to every day. And everybody just gave me the hot tip, you know, because. You know, Kenny and I were laughing with this one friend who was getting his butt handed to him in stocks. And he says, oh, don't worry, just buy real estate like Kenny does. And this idiot, I mean, he has a PhD in economics. Guy had never bought any real estate in his life. But he just thinks it's the same as a stock. And that's the main point of this show, that if you're not willing to invest in your little in your education first, don't buy real estate. Well, and I, I will say something to add on to that because the prop it really when we look at properties, what I love most about buying an, a, an apartment property or a single family home is when you can when you know how to manage, you can affect a plan that will raise the net operating income, thus the value of the building. If you're just waiting on the market to take you higher, you're in for a very long road. So the point you're making is, as Kenny said, you buy broken properties or properties with a problem. How do you increase the value? How do you increase the rents? How do you increase the income? Right. That's what you. That's where your forte. Even if it's for. not broken, there yeah. there may be a play. There yeah. always has to be a story or a plan for the property. You, you may be able to reposition by doing renovations so inside. So the so you're saying you look for ways to increase the property regardless of whether the price the value is going up the market's going up or down. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, but you have to you, you, you absolutely must uh, couple that with proper uh, tenant screening and making sure that you're approving the right people to live there because you you may end up losing your money if you don't have the right people living. And you in could these. get sued. Absolutely. So, so we so use the word. I'll tell you the word we use internally is forced equity. Forced. Forced. That's the that's the word we use. So we we what, say what does that, mean? that means that that's something that we have control of. That means that when we buy a property of 50, 60, 70 percent occupied, you know, can we take it to 90 percent? And that's what we that's all management and that's forced. There's and then the other term and what a lot of people talk about is market, you know, equity by, by the market itself. Those are those are forces that are not within our control. Mm. Mm. Kim and I went to San Antonio. What was that place? <laughs> yeah, Lincoln it, Green. God, it was the biggest disaster I'd ever oh, seen in my life. A 300 vacant on a 680 unit. And, and, and then so Kenny, Kenny and I walk in to the, the first unit. The place has been stripped. I mean, the guys took Fire. all, the, all the, wall, the walls off and took the copper wires out. The toilet was sitting in front of the fireplace. And I said, well, this guy had an interesting time looking at the fire on top of his toilet. And I'm going, I'm out of here. The ceilings are falling in. All the walls are open because they stole all the electrical wiring. I'm out of here. Kenny goes, oh, this is the Mm -hmm. best deal I've seen in a long time. (laughs) But that's the difference that makes the difference. I would have run. And the interesting thing was the guy that destroyed the place was the prior owner, right? Yeah, yeah. He he, he, uh, essentially ran that thing into the ground and then the bank foreclosed on him. And we bought it from uh, Bank of America, actually. Uh, they did a write down on the loan. What does and, that mean? Well, it means that the loan at the time was twenty five million, and I think we got, I think we got them to uh, basically write it off, write it down to twenty. They financed it for twenty, and then we put seven and a half million into it, and that. So we were uh, twenty seven and a half million dollars into that project. And I think it's worth oh, well over fifty million today. Maybe close to sixty, and the yep. cash flow is now infinite because we have oh. we got all of our investment money back, and every month we get a check from Leslie. That is correct. Yeah, and, it, and it's just fixing it. Yep, and and so it was it was half 
unrented, half vacant, and you've both talked a little touched on, you know, how do you find a good tenant? What are what what is the, do you have a, like a little criteria, a small yeah. short criteria? Yeah, there's one thing that I just want to point out too that I, I this is not in a bad area if you remember. No, it's a no, great it's area. Great. Remember, San Antonio, it's right across from USAA Insurance, hospitals, and a really high end neighborhood. And so when when sometimes when you talk about properties like this, people think, oh, they're buying in the hood, you know, but right. it's not. No, it's a great property. So what are some of the Give me some key points on what you how you evaluate. Very a key. One yep. of our one of our most important is do they have prior experience in renting and and do they pay their rent on time? Verifying that they that they pay their rent on time and that they have sufficient income to cover their but rent. Also, they have lawsuits against them or absolutely criminal their credit, charges. Their credit and their criminal. You know, checking all of those um, all of those and not allowing some of those folks to come in. Uh, you, you have to have a fail safe for that. But this is the big thing is that when I you guys bring your hundreds of employees into town once a year and you have these meetings with them. You don't review the numbers. You just talked about the key is those great employees because holy Mac Kim and I, you know, that La Loma Vista, yes. our employees were stealing from us and we couldn't detect it because the property manager was stealing from us. It took us two years to f- kind of figure it out. So why was, why was our check, why were our checks going down? It was a proper, our employee was stealing from us. Remember that, Kim? Oh, I remember very clearly, yeah. as does Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> but once again, it's Robert Kiyosaki of the Rich Dad Radio Show. We're talking to Ken McElroy, author of the ABCs of Real Estate Investing, ABCs of Property Management, the Advanced Guide to Real Estate Investing. His website is MC Companies, M-C-C-O-M-P-N-I-E-S, and Leslie Price is a partner and president of MC Properties. We'll be right back when we talk more about whether you should stay in your 401k or you should become a big time property investor. You're listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show with Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Advisors have a great gift for you. Visit richdadadvisors.com and receive five free reports on business and investing success. Five free reports that can help you right now. And while there, check out the Author's Choice audio series. Audio is a great way to learn. And for as little as 99 cents, you can download key chapters from all the Rich Dad Advisor books. You can listen to The Myths and Magic of Real Estate Investing, Seven Steps to Limited Liability, The Four Pillars of Investing, Team Code of Honor, or The Psychology of Debt, among other great audios. For pennies, you can power up your skills for getting out of the rat race. So please visit richdadadvisors.com for your five free reports and your powerful and affordable audio chapters. That's richdadadvisors.com for great information that can help you right now. This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And there's so much misinformation out there in the market. And I'm just going to say it again. If you're not willing to do the study or the hard work, stay in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds and ETFs. Don't cross the line. You know, just because you own a house doesn't make you a real estate investor. And the thing I'm concerned about right now is all the signs we're on the, we're on the verge of 2007 all over again. Because in 2005 and six, Kim and Kenny and I were laughing because our vacancies were going up because everybody was leaving our apartments, right? And yeah. they were becoming yeah, they were homeowners. Property owners. Yeah, in fact, we were we were actually they were telling us they were you, you buying know, a house. One, they were you know people that were delinquent in rent and and people who couldn't qualify to rent. Yeah, people couldn't qualify were actually going and buying condos and houses, and <laughs> it was crazy and flipping them and doing all that. Yeah. And so it's, you know, we're, we're, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I like crashes personally, but the difference here again is the word liquidity. If you get caught when the market's coming down, you can get out of a stock or an ETF or bond and savings. You cannot get out of real estate. That's the hardest thing you can do. So with that said, we're going to go talking about what are the trends in real estate today. So Kenny, what do you see coming? Well, we're certainly peaking. Cap capitalization rates are really, really low. And what does that and mean? Those are that's when you divide the net net operating income into the price. And so, you what you want to do is you want to buy. What is net operating income? It's the, that's income after expenses minus so that, debt. So the higher the cap rate, the better the deal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so a cap rate of eight is good. Cap yeah, rate of two is yeah. not good. So ca- capitalization rates are important. I just got an interesting sheet the other day on on all the different cap rates for every single 
sector, you know, from self-storage to industrial to office to, to multifamily. They're all different. It's important to watch because when you're borrowing money, you're they're going to look at the exit cap rate, you know. So what, what are you borrowing at and what are you going to sell at? So, so we are seeing a multifamily peak. I believe it's peaking. It's you know we haven't bought anything uh, recently, not in the last twelve months. Are, are real estate prices, I mean, across the board, generally going up? Nationwide? Not generally. You no, know, we're seeing uh, retail get hit pretty good because Amazon and okay. people are buying online, not just from Amazon, but the, you know, the retailers are hurting, the malls are hurting, and um, y- you know, uh, industrials doing very well because of. Amazon and the these big, people, big yeah, warehouses, yes, things like that. Yes, the self storage is doing well. So, is there an area you guys are looking at that might be like the next opportunity? We are. You know, we're looking. We're we're kind of focused on the um, the seniors. You know, that are all the aging population. That's you know. me. Yeah, yeah. That's why I said it. Actually, <laughs> so, oh, I, <laughs> can, can, can I pronounce? He's going to build a, a senior living center, and I can have the penthouse. Right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, so, you know, and I just read something interesting about baby boomers, and what they said is what they thought would happen is the baby boomers would retire with all this money and have this life of leisure, but what's really happening is they can't afford to retire. Or they're choosing not to retire, and they're not having they're not retiring to these leisurely locations. Yeah, what we're actually seeing is we're seeing a lot of uh, really expensive housing coming on the market because they're downsizing. Mm, okay. So because they don't they're you know empty nesters now, and their kids are gone, and and so they live in these big homes. And well, uh, Kim, Kim and I live on the you know the, the Biltmore. A house that sold for four million ten years ago is just sold for two million. Yeah, that's right what house. I mean. Yeah, so that's yeah. because there's a lot of that, and so if you think about it, there's going to be a lot more of that. You know, there's no reason to have this. I, I'm in the same situation. My kids are about both in college now, and I have a big house. I don't really need a big house, and so you know, I'll probably downsize. And so uh, that's happening all over the place. So there'll be a glut of you know what they call McMansions, you yeah. know, all over. And where where else do you see opportunity? I see opportunity in single family housing under five hundred thousand actually um, there hasn't been a lot of new development at all around the country oddly enough if you really think about it because the lenders are still pretty tight there has been on multifamily but with multifamily we still haven't hit the demand so we need three hundred fifty thousand units a year in the nation and last year we didn't even deliver to that. build to build to build just to keep 000. up with demand so we still since the recession haven't been hit. Uh, we have not kept up with demand. So we have, they say there's a 10-year demand in apartments, right? Or eight, eight years. Eight years. Well, that's good news for us, right, Leslie? Agreed. Agreed. And and I think that, um, you know, based on the, the way they've tempered, the way they've been delivering new units, it's allowing us to have higher occupancies and higher rents as a result of that. Um, Ken had mentioned cap rates earlier. They've they've remained fairly steady, although compressed from where they were. They've re- remained fairly steady. So, so this is maybe a little different from the last economic downturn where, you know, the values were, were artificially inflated. This is a little bit of a softer landing, but we're starting to see um, occupancies tick up a little bit, and you know, really for eighteen, they're they're expecting to deliver a good three hundred and twenty thousand units nationwide. Um, that should allow for occupancy to remain fairly high. And then interest rates. Uh, I think interest rates are going to go up. All that what that does is it lowers the cash flow. Yeah. So you're if you you're paying more for your debt and your prices are higher, you're getting less in cash flow. And how does the, and without getting into a lot of detail with the whole tax code and all of that, without getting into a lot of detail, is there something that people should pay, be paying attention to? Well, for us, we fared very well on the apartments. Uh, there's almost no change. Uh, you know, there was all kinds of stuff on the chopping block for, you know, from carried interest to depreci- you know, some of the depreciation schedules. The depreciation schedule did go to 30 years from 27 and a half. It's insignificant. So we really, really came out of this. And let's say if, well. if you feel like me, a lot of these things don't make sense to you. That's why it's the third book. It's the Advanced Guide to Real Estate Investing by Kenny. That's that's the fundamental. If you don't understand what he's talking about, cap rates and NOI and carried interest and all this. Look, I'll just say it again. It's not like buying Amazon. It's not like buying a stock. You've got to be a much more sophisticated person. So stay out of real estate unless you're willing to make the commitment to learn. Right, Leslie? Agreed. And, and let me ask you this, because we have a, a friend of ours whose whose business is these little strip malls, 
and the little strip malls, the, the businesses are closing right, left, and center. And so they're tr- mm. looking at ways to reinvent these strip malls. Um, do you have any experience in that? Or it's Medical like they're- marijuana. <laughs> 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 they're doing everything. Done and done. <laughs> you, can, you can grow them in those super Kmart yeah. stores. I know. What, what the, I mean, what, Sears closed 60, 60 stores. and Macy's. Macy's yeah. and Kmart are closing all Kmart these stores. The, the they're place, called yeah. the anchor tenants. And that in yeah. real estate, I mean, it's, oh, that's as good they're as hurting. gold. You look so at all the best likely- buys and circuit cities and... I mean, every industry is so not where, where, Would you look at this and go, oh, maybe there's something else we could do here? What's going? What do you think is going to happen with these these big locations? Big box will probably turn into more of the industrial or warehousing. Warehousing, yeah. So you know that e-commerce it's starting to shift a little bit away from at Amazon. A lot of people are robbing and duplicating, while the lion's share of the work or the the sales are are relative to the uh, e-commerce. But a lot of the other folks are coming to the table and selling online, making it a lot easier. Yeah. So they need they need places for warehouse. Yeah. Some somebody did say one um, recently in one of our shows that the, that's going to be the next opportunity. Delivery. Everybody wants everything delivered. Well, and it's a it's a real problem in multifamily. Uh, it, it's it from a management standpoint, it's a nightmare because we don't have sufficient real estate to handle all the packages. So we've we've all had a, a oh, little bit of, of you difficulty. The packages that are getting yeah. delivered to the that's tenant a, and that's dealing a new with thing. that. You've, you've, you have twelve hundred twenty two units. <laughs> you've got thousands of packages coming. And, well, what about um, Whole Foods with Amazon buying them? Amazon now has little cubicles and you can get your packages delivered to Whole Foods. It's yeah. a distri- distribution, distribution hub yeah. for them. Yes. Yeah, yeah really. but to answer your question, Kim, uh, you know, it's happening with banks too. Nobody's going into banks anymore. Yeah. And I know, you know, I was on that banking call with you guys and, and he said that, gosh, in 10 years, uh, all those corner banks will be gone too. So so we're, you're going to see a big shift, I think, personally. But In, in bricks and mortar, as I, I do. call it. Yeah, as bricks in bricks and mortar. So before we uh, complete the show, we're talking about 1,200 units and all this and banks and big bucks, but we all have to start somewhere. So what was your, how did you get started? You know, what was your first investment? Yeah, well, so at the very end of the day, as you guys know, people need housing, period, right? And they either can afford a house or not. And, and they might even be able to afford a house, but they may not want to. And that's what we're seeing now is, you know, people are moving to where jobs are. And so... They're, they want to stay mobile, and they're not as loyal as they were. Which, so. which is also a key of where you buy is Correct. where there are jobs. Yeah. Right. So if somebody moves to San Francisco, let's say, for uh, a job, they may not like the job, and they may say, oh, I'm going to try it for six months mm. or a year, right? And they may move to Atlanta. And so so they're living in smaller properties, uh, you know, where the rents are cheaper. And, um, you know, and but for me, I started with a, you know, two-bedroom, two-bath. And, you know, where was this? In uh, in uh in Seattle area and you know had a renter I was cash flowing a hundred dollars a month and um, you know that is the model that will always be right now they say they they're calling it a renter nation where uh, home ownership is at 61 percent it was at 69 at one point that's when Bush tried to push home ownership which collapsed the that's market. exactly everybody thinks it's Obama but it was actually Bush yeah. Bush pushed home ownership it, they got all the way up to 69 And they dropped the interest rates to get them in. That's right. It. So, Leslie, how did you guys start up? In- uh, my first real estate investment was a two-bedroom, one-bath condo in Vegas. In Vegas. In Vegas. In Vegas. And it was um, interesting. How much because was I, it? I had, uh, it was $120,000, and that was just before the market started to turn, and, and I lost my shorts for a while. Key is managing around it. I actually uh, didn't manage it for myself, even though I knew how to manage. Being so far away, what was important to me. Because you were living where? Phoenix? Arizona. What was important to me is that I had somebody who could watch it and manage it properly. And so I third party managed that through somebody who was local. Even though I knew how to do it, right. they knew how to do it better because they it's were there. And, and that's a really learn. good point because when we started, um, and it was as we started getting you know more and more units. Uh, we were at it. We were traveling all the time, and we didn't know anything mm-hmm. about property management. And we brought in a property management company, and strangely enough, every month we broke even. <laughs> strangely <laughs> enough, and the money kept going out, and we didn't know where it was going because we didn't we didn't have any expertise in property management at that time. And so it was. It's a great point that you Trust, make, but yeah. verify. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So once again, you know, for me, it was a little one bedroom, one bath uh, condo on the beach in Maui. You know. Everybody said they don't exist, but the whole property was in foreclosure. 
So I got it for eighteen thousand dollars. The guy, the, the owner, financed it at sixteen thousand. Owner finance, and I gave him a credit card for two thousand, and I made twenty five bucks a month. But this is the point, ladies and gentlemen. That's how I started. The lesson I learned is exactly what was Leslie talking about. The property was too far away. It was on Maui. I lived in Honolulu. They something went wrong. I had to get go to the airport, climb on the plane, fly to Maui, rent a car, drive out to the property, yell and scream, and come back. Whole day's work was gone for twenty five bucks a month, and then the tenant moved out because they were upset with me, and that was a thing. So Kim and I had a rule. When we started off. The property is one hour away by driving. No more. The point here is this: the reason Kim and I are financially free is because we started doing small. Yeah. Today, thanks to Kenny and Leslie, we have about 6,500 units. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars a month coming in, much of it tax-free. Our, our return on investment is infinite. How is it infinite, Kim? Because we take the money out. We, we buy the property. Kenny and, and Leslie and their team improve the income and improve the property, improve the value of the property, we pull that money out. You would refinance We it. refinance it, get our money out. That's that the NOI, origin- that you've, you've increased the rents on it. So we pull that money out that we originally invested, so we have no money into the deal, but we still have the property and we still have the cash flow. And that's the formula the four of us use. And every year that money goes up because every year we keep, in fact, it gets so bad when Kenny gives me a huge check. I said, what am I going to do with this money, Kenny? Find me another deal, right? That's right. And, and one other point is, you know, you talk about the cash flow quadrant, ESB&I, employee, self-employed, big business, and investor. We were in the S quadrant of of uh, uh, apartments. And I couldn't manage all of the, you know, I could only manage so much. And so it got to the point where we weren't buying any more property because I couldn't manage anymore because I was an S. And so when we met Ken, he's like, well, that's what I do. And so now we had somebody that could manage and invest and professional and, and very aligned in our philosophy. Um, so then we moved into the B quadrant of apartments. So once again, I want to thank both Kenny and Leslie. Thank you for your time. Thanks for you sharing your wisdom, which is part of the rich dad way of looking at things. And uh, really, thank you very much. And we'll, when we come back, we'll be going to Ask Robert. You're listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show with Robert Kiyosaki. Don't be like Charlie. Charlie is that do-it-yourselfer who does himself in. Do-it-yourself is good for tile and grout. It is not good for asset protection. Charlie thought he'd save a few dollars forming his LLC online. With no guidance, he did it wrong. When he sold the property, he lost thousands and thousands of dollars. He did himself in by trying to do it himself. Don't burn yourself. Use Corporate Direct to set up and maintain your LLCs and corporations. Corporate Direct is owned and operated by attorney and rich dad advisor, Garrett Sutton. Garrett wrote the bestsellers, Loopholes of Real Estate, and Start Your Own Corporation. He is Robert Kiyosaki's attorney for asset protection. He and his team will do it right. Visit them at CorporateDirect.com or call 800-600-1760. Mention Rich Dad and receive $100 off your formation fee. That's CorporateDirect.com. CorporateDirect.com. Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Advisors have a great gift for you. Visit richdadadvisors.com and receive five free reports on business and investing success. Five free reports that can help you right now. And while there, check out the Author's Choice audio series. Audio is a great way to learn. And for as little as 99 cents, you can download key chapters from all the Rich Dad Advisor books. You can listen to The Myths and Magic of Real Estate Investing, Seven Steps to Limited Liability, The Four Pillars of Investing, Team Code of Honor, or The Psychology of Debt, among other great audios. For pennies, you can power up your skills for getting out of the rat race. So please visit richdadadvisors.com for your five free reports and your powerful and affordable audio chapters. That's richdadadvisors.com for great information that can help you right now. Your financial education continues. Now back to Robert Kiyosaki and the Rich Dad Radio Show. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Today, we're talking about the difference between a stock investor and a real estate investor. 
So you can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime and anywhere on your t- on iTunes or Android, and all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them so you can listen to this again, and maybe it'll sink in. But most importantly, if this is an important show, you have friends who want to invest in real estate, I would get together, listen to this program, and discuss it. So we're going to the most popular part of our program. It's called Ask Robert. You can send your questions to richdadradio.com. We're very fortunate. Both Kenny and Leslie have the time to stick around for this for the next 10 minutes. And so we'll go into the first question. So Melissa, what's the first question? Our first question today comes from John in Thousand Oaks, California. Favorite book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It says, Robert and Kim, you always say that making mistakes makes you smarter. So what was your greatest mistake in real estate? How did you overcome it? What fears did you have to overcome? And how did it make you a better investor and entrepreneur? So can I say something? No matter where I go in the world, most of these people come up, they all want want to know about my biggest mistakes. I make mistakes every day. And our school system does a terrible job telling you that making mistakes is bad. I made so many mistakes, it's incredible. But I will say this, I have never lost money in real estate, never. I've lost money in business but never in real estate. And that's why I have this program today is because many people think that investing in real estate is the same as investing in the stock market. And they're two different complete animals. So the point here is this, if you don't wanna make mistakes in 1973, I took my first real estate course and I have never stopped learning. And that's why we have Ken McElroy's books, the ABCs of Real Estate Investing, ABCs of Property Management, Advanced Guide to Real Estate Investing. That's where we get infinite returns and when we make money with nothing. But you've got to study to do that, and most people are too effing lazy to do that. They just want to—they just want to make money, and then they lose money. And the problem with stocks versus real estate—you can get out of stocks really quickly. It's called liquidity. You cannot get out of real estate if it goes bad. And the key to property is management of the property, not buying or selling it. You can make a bad buy, but you can fix it also. But if you can't manage it, it's gone. And I did write about one of my biggest mistakes in my book, Rich Woman. And the mistake I made is that this was a bigger deal than I had ever done before. We were living in Phoenix. The property was in Florida. Right next to to Trump's Doral Doral Country Country Club. Club. Um, And I fear got in my way. And I analyzed this thing to death. And I was so afraid of making a mistake. I was so afraid of losing money. And finally, when I realized that I had lost, so I lost the deal. I basically lost the deal because I took way too much time, way too much money. Analysis paralysis is what I had, and it was all based on fear, and I didn't trust what I knew. And if I could remind you of something, you hired these attorneys. Attorneys, yes, I one did. One in Tucson, of all places. Yeah, I don't know to, why in Tucson. To deal with Florida. And the other, other attorney was in Florida, and the costs just went through the roof as these two attorneys had a field day on fees. So that's why it takes a while to learn that stuff. Yeah. I didn't know why she hired, why she hired that two-star <laughs> Never understood why. It was recommended, but the but point is this. I lost that deal. I learned the lesson, and I was so upset with myself that within two months, I had purchased a better deal, almost the same the same type of property, better numbers, better deal, three blocks from my house. But the thing and was, today, all that analysis made you a better to understand yes, this was a better deal. Yeah, I, I, I knew this type of property up one side and down another. And so today it's still one of our best performing properties. Right. So it's, you always want to, the, the mistakes are priceless. The mistakes are, but if you're afraid of making mistakes, do not get into real estate. Do not get into business. Kenny, you ever made mistakes? Yeah, of course. I've lost some people's money too. Uh, same situation. Not, you only telling me now? <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Actually, that's why I'm here. <laughs> so, yeah, my, yeah no, no, we were doing condo conversions uh, back in oh, 2005, and, and uh, you know, the market changed, and people couldn't buy condos anymore, and we were stuck with a big condo project. So. Yeah. Plus, you had some water faucets that blew up, or something. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, that was another mistake. So, yeah, there's well, you know, the, all the kinds thing of about them. multifamily. It's multiple losses. There, well. Yeah, there's. You know, honestly, if you're in property management, that's actually you're dealing with all the issues on a daily basis on every project. Which is a really good point because when we have gone with you to different cities to look at property, you don't line up a real estate broker to show us properties. You line up. A property management company yeah. to talk to about properties. Why is that? Yeah, yeah, because obviously there you have to look at their intention. So the broker is just there to sell something. The manager, who whoever is going to get that project, 
they're actually going to have to be the ones that are standing in the fire doing, you know, doing the And they don't work. care which property you buy. Correct. They just want to manage yes. whichever one you buy. So, right. So we like to bring them along so that, you know, so we're going to get real rents, real expenses, real, you know, and they're going to talk real to numbers. us objectively yeah. about what they can and can't do because, you know, their performance is on the line. All you listen out there, I have a very personal friend. He's a property manager. And I said, you got any good deals? He says, no, I've never seen a good deal. <laughs> I said, but he deals with people like him and I, who have a lot of money and all this, we're always investing, but he cannot see it. He is a property manager, not an investor. Big difference. Next question, Melissa. Our next question comes from Andrea in Texas, favorite book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. She says, if the money or stock market crashes in 2018, is it still advisable to try and get into debt with real estate as a new investor? I think I'm glad you asked that question. Please don't do it. You know, I'm, I'm doing my best on this program to let people know the difference between a stock and real estate. Is there a big difference, Kenny? It's a huge difference. One is so easy. Buying a stock is so Idiots easy. Idiots can do it I every can do day. it right now while we're on this show. You know, real estate is a team sport. It just is. Business and real estate it's, investing is te- a team sport. And investing is a, is a business. It is. I mean, yeah. it's, you're, it's, you become a business owner, basically, right. or self-employed. And, and the reason why wanted Leslie on this program, not just Kenny, is because the real key is property management, right? Yes, absolutely. And if people don't have experience in that, that's where they lose or make it. That's a, that's a, that's a turning point. A hundred percent. Market will only take you so far. Uh, yeah. If you want to count on the market taking you higher, it's it, you'll likely even in a good market. If you're not managing right, you'll probably lose. And somebody's going to steal from you. They always steal from you. Always something. There's there's so many things you don't know that you think you know. Get you. So please. Buy Kenny's books, ABC's A Real Estate Investment, the Richard Advisor's book, ABC's A Property Management, Advanced Guide to Real Estate, and his website is mccompanies.com. Please don't buy real estate if you're an amateur. Next question. Our next question comes from Alan in Kentucky. Favorite book, Unfair Advantage. It says, Robert, I've read almost all of your books, and I know you always talk about buying properties. What are your thoughts on building your own all-in-one location so that they are close by and easier to manage. Are you a builder is my question. How many properties have you built? Have you built multifamily? I mean, are you a contractor? Are you successful? Are you rich as a contractor? What do you think, Kenny? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it actually has more to do with what the cost of the property you would buy if it's existing and the rent and the cost of something that you would build and the rent. So those are the two things you would look so at. So you'd compare what it costs yeah. to build versus so, buy yeah. existing. So if I can buy a, um, a place, let's say a home for $100,000 and the rent's 1500 or I can build something for 200000 and the rent's 2000 it's better to buy something existing, right? So you just have to look at the numbers and that will determine. Like right now, prices on existing properties are rising so fast, which is the reason there's building. So you don't just make the choice. In other words, um, it's actually more economical right now to build than it is to buy. Let me me just say this much. The difference between an investor, a property manager, and a builder, they're very different people, different skill sets, different things like this. In a hot market, when Kim and I were building our house in Phoenix, they couldn't get subs. You ever have bad subs on a project? Subcontractors, yeah. That's when there's a hot market and yeah. all the subcontractors are working for the general contractors. And they couldn't get they couldn't get materials. Nope. And the cost of materials yeah. was through the roof. Well, that's a whole. There's a lot more risk with building for sure. I remember when Kim and I were put, were you know just just putting addition onto our house, we couldn't get any subs, and this cast of characters came in. <laughs> they were a cast of characters. Holy <laughs> mackerels! You know, I th- I thought they were from the Adams family or something. You know. And they were hanging drywall, you know, with a, a gypsum board. I hung gypsum board as a kid, and I could hang it better than these guys. And we had to, eventually we had to tear it all apart and put it back up again. Any comments there, Leslie? You know, in our line of business, we always have to have those reliable subcontractors, but they become fewer and farther between as the market starts to turn like now, as as there's more building going on and construction costs rising. Those folks are flocking to where they can make the most profit. Correct. So if somebody was considering building for the first time, what's what, did, what Start small. What's your advice? I, I, I definitely would partner with somebody who who's had a proven track, track right. record. Yeah. 
And Good your point. partner um, is Ross is a builder, right? He is. He's a general contractor, yeah. So understand it's a team sport, you guys, but you've got to be a good team member, and most people aren't, and that's why they don't get the good deals. So I want to thank you, both Leslie and Kenny. And thanks for your sharing your wisdom. Uh, for those of you who are listening, you can submit your questions to Ask Robert at Rich Dad Radio, and thank you for listening. The final word is there's a big difference between a stock investor and a real estate investor. Thank you for listening.